In Creo Parametric, you have a variety of different dimensioning schemes for chamfers. I went through those in the first video in the series on chamfers. In this video, I'm going to go into more details, and honestly, I'm going to go into the weeds on this, and this will be in more depth than probably 99% of all Creo Parametric users will ever need to go, but I just want to make sure that you are aware of the different combinations that you can use. So at a high level, like I went through in the first video, you have six different dimensioning schemes for a chamfer. There's D by D, where you're going the same distance D back along from the edge. Then there's D1 by D2, where you have different distances along the surfaces from the edge. If you have a 90 degree angle, there's 45 by D. And Instead, you could use angle by D where it's just going to have an angular value from the distance D back along one of the edges. And then there's this O by O and O1 by O2. And I'll talk about that in a little more detail. And this is where stuff gets a little weird. In a previous video, I talked about the two different creation methods that you have for chamfers. The default is offset surface, and that's what you can use the overwhelming majority of the time. There are some subtle differences if you're using the tangent distance option. And the tangent distance option really comes into play when you are trying to chamfer an edge that are formed by surfaces that are non-planar or non-analytic. So it's, it's, it's a bit of an edge case over here. So let's talk about this in a little more detail. And by the way, I only have one slide that I'm going to go through before we jump in to see this inside of Creo Parametric. There are three different cases you have to be aware of. First is when you have a constant 90 degree angle along the edge. The second case is where you have a constant angle along the edge that you're chamfering, but it's not 90 degrees. Maybe it's more than 90 degrees, maybe it's less than 90 degrees, it's just not 90 degrees. And then the third case is varying, where you do not have a constant angle along the edge reference that you have selected. And so, like I went through here before, if you have a constant 90 degree angle along the edge, you have the choice of all six different dimensioning schemes. If it's constant but not 90 degrees, you have all of the dimensioning schemes except 45 by D, which makes sense. If the angle between the surfaces that form the edge is varying, the only two dimensioning schemes that you have when you are using the offset surface creation method is O by O and O1 by O2, which is essentially the analog of D by D or D1 by D2. And I'll show you that one in the demonstration. Now, if you are doing the tangent distance creation method, well, with a constant 90 degree angle, you have all the dimensioning schemes except the O options and the same thing if you have a constant angle but it's not 90 degrees. If it's varying then your choices are D by D or D1 by D2 with the tangent distance method. So when O by O and O1 by O2 first came out I remember being really confused and not understanding the use case of it, but it really seems that it is to handle edges in which the angle between the surfaces is varying along there. Now, one thing to note, if we take a look at the constant 90 degrees, here we have the O by O and O1 by O2. If you have a constant 90 degree angle, O by O is the same as D by D, and O1 by O2 is the same as D1 by D2. And one other thing to be aware of is that you can select multiple edges for a chamfer in a given set. The first selected edge is going to determine which of these dimensioning schemes are available to you based on the angle between the surfaces that are forming the edge. Again, I know I really went into the weeds in here, but this is just deep background on the chamfer feature. Now let's jump into Creo Parametric and take a look at a few simple examples of this. Okay, here I am in Creo Parametric with a very simple part model. Let's start off by chamfering an edge 
that has a 90 degree angle. I will select this edge and then from the mini toolbar I can choose the edge chamfer tool and here it's giving us a value of 10. I'm fine with that. If we go to the dashboard for the feature, here you can see that we have all six different choices in here, D by D, D1 by D2, and then we have angle by D, 45 by D, O by O, and O1 by O2. Oh, let me collapse this, I really don't need to see it. Uh, and if I go to the sets tab over here, we have the creation method, the default is offset surfaces. If I change this to tangent distance, well, it's the same value over here. And you can see the four different choices that we have. We don't have the offset choices. Let's change this back to offset surfaces. Instead of D by D, I'm gonna change this to O by O, and you'll notice that the geometry doesn't change. It's the same when you have a 90 degree angle forming the surfaces. D by D and O by O are the same. Similarly, D1 by D2 and O1 by O2 are the same. So that's the situation when you have an edge with a 90 degree angle. Let's leave this at D by D and then just hit the check mark or middle mouse button to create the first chamfer in the model. Now let's take a look at a situation where we're trying to chamfer an edge that's not 90 degrees. You can see that this edge is greater than 90 degrees. Here we have a value of 10 over here from the distance. If I go to the drop down list, you can see, see that we have five different choices for the dimensioning scheme over here. Similarly, if I go to the sets tab and change from offset surfaces to tangent distance, then go to the drop down list. We only have three choices in this case. The O options went out of here. But before I create the chamfer on this edge, I want to create a sketch that'll show you what actually happens when you are using the D by D method or similarly D1 by D2. So let me select this surface over here. And then from the mini toolbar, I will create a sketch. Let me go into my sketch references and add these two different surfaces over here. Then I can close the references dialog box. Let me go to my sketch view. So here's what happens when you are using D1 by D2. I'm going to sketch a line that's going to represent the chamfer from there to about over there. And we have some different dimensions in here. Let me throw in a sketcher point so I can create a dimension. And so the first dimension I create will be from this point to the sketcher point over here and then middle mouse button. And let's say that that's going to be a value of 10 for the size of the chamfer. Let's do the same thing over here from this point over here to this point over here. And I'm going to leave my mouse right over the sketch reference in order to get a dimension in that direction. If I don't hover my mouse over that, I would end up either getting a vertical or a horizontal dimension. So here you can see my sketch. Let me grab this dimension and drag it out over here. And so there you can see the line, which is located a distance of 10 back from the edge that is formed by the intersection of the two surfaces. Let's hit the check mark. And now if I go to create that chamfer over here, let's hit the chamfer button. O by O, hit the check mark. You can see that, hopefully you can see that, uh, there is the chamfer is right coincident with that line that I just sketched. So again, that's what you get with D by D when you have a constant angle and it's not 90 degrees. Hey, it goes the distance D back along both of the surfaces. Let's take a look at the other side over here to see how O by O is different. Let's select this surface to sketch on. I'll hit the sketch button over here. And now I'm going to use the offset command. And let's offset from this surface a distance of 10 in the specified direction. And offset from this surface distance of 10 in the specified direction. Let me go to a non-shaded mode for a moment. Let's use our friend squiggle trim to get rid of a couple of the entities over here. And so when you're using the offset method, it will offset the surfaces, the specified distance, and then from the intersection over here, it's going to make a couple of lines that are perpendicular to the other surface. So let's take a look at that. Let's create a line over here and I'll just grab over here and there I can see it snapped to perpendicular over there. And then similarly over here, 
Well, right now it's technically went to vertical, I believe it was, but let me force a perpendicular constraint in here, perpendicular between here and here. Hey, I get a conflict. Let's just get rid of the vertical constraint, delete that one. And now let's connect the ends of those two lines. And so I'll select those two over there. And so this sketch shows you this is the portion that would end up being chamfered off if you use the offset options. It ends up being a different distance than the uh, if you are using the D by D method. So let's hit the check mark to get out of here. Let's select this edge. And then from the mini toolbar, I will choose to chamfer. And right now it's using D by D. And you can see that with D by D, it's actually bigger than the sketch that I just created. Let me uh, change to being normal to this surface. Select this. Oh, let me cancel out of here for a moment. Let me go right normal to this surface from the mini toolbar. Okay. So let's then choose to create a chamfer. Ah, looks like I guess I've got to rotate it. Let me just go to the back view. There we go. Okay, so there you can see how big the chamfer will be if I use D by D with the D value of 10. But now I'm going to change this D by D to a value of O. And it increased the value over here to keep the chamfer the same size. Let's change the chamfer dimension to a value of 10. And now you can see the size of the chamfer is in line with the sketch that I created. So that's how the size of the chamfer is determined inside of here. Let's hit the check mark. And so hopefully when I go over here and let's change back to a shaded with edges mode, you can see that the D by D chamfer with a dimensional value of 10 is bigger, takes away more material than the D by D chamfer, excuse me, the O by O chamfer with a dimensional value of 10. So again, that's a big difference between D by D and O by O. All right, the last case to take a look at with the dimensioning schemes, we'll take a look at chamfering this edge over here. Let me go to one of my cross sections. Let's go to cross section A, activate it, and uh, let's turn on the shading as well. And let's go to a front view. So here we have a situation where you can tell that this angle over here on this side is acute, and this angle over here is obtuse. This one is less than 90 degrees. This one is greater than 90 degrees. So the surfaces that form that edge have a varying angle. Similarly, let's turn off the hatching and deactivate this section. And I'll show you the B section. Let's activate that one. And then you can see that, hey, if we take a look over here, the edges that form this surface over here, these are at a 90 degree angle at this point. So it's varying from an acute angle through 90 to an obtuse angle and then back around again. Let's deactivate this cross section and take a look at what happens when we try to chamfer this particular edge. I will select the edge, then hit the edge chamfer tool. It automatically propagates to all tangent references. And right now it's using O by O with a value of 10 over here. Let's go to the sets tab. It's using the offset surfaces method in this particular case. So you can see the material that is being removed with this particular combination. And if I go to the drop down list, you can see that the only options that I have here are O by O and O1 by O2 because it's an edge that has an angle that's varying along it. All right, let's change the method here from offset surfaces to tangent distance. And right now it says that the set is failing. Let's try a smaller value. So I'll use a value of two. Now you can see the chamfer that is being created. And in this particular situation, the only dimensioning schemes that I have available to me are by are D by D and D1 by D2. And let me see how big I can make this one. So again, it was fine with a value of 10 when I was using offset surfaces and the O by O method. But when you're using the tangent distance and D by D, well, there's a value at which it's going to end up failing. And it looks like it's, let's try seven. 
yeah so somewhere between seven and eight the value is going to fail by the way it looks like oh that's some ugly pinching that we have going on right there but anyhow let's change back from tangent distance to offset surfaces here we can see a value of seven is fine and we don't have any of that pinching in there and we can increase the chamfer by the way two biggest causes of chamfers failing first missing references second you have a value that's too big that is causing geometry to collapse in on itself or deleting some surfaces but anyhow yeah i know i went into a lot of detail in this video but there are just you know it's in the weeds kinds of details regarding the different creation methods and the nature of the edges that you are selecting in order to determine the different dimensioning schemes that are available to you when creating a chamfer. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.